Hello friends, in this video I will talk about some characterization techniques used for nanomaterials such as scanning electron microscopy SEM, transmission electron microscopy TEM and atomic force microscopy AFM. So electron microscopes are developed due to the limitations of the optical microscopes because the visible light have the wavelength in range 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer and then electron microscopes are uh, the, those instruments which uses the beam of electrons to see the objects at a very fine scale and electrons have wavelength around uh, in nano, few nanometers and basically electron microscopes are of two types one is scanning electron microscope known as SEM it is used to visualize the surface of the objects whereas the transmission electron microscopes it uses to study the inner structure of the specimen this image shows the difference in the light microscope or optical microscope and electron microscope in light microscope we use the light and using our eye we can see the objects of few micrometers and whereas in electron microscope we use, we can see up to a few and uh, nanometer or few angstrom and the lenses used in optical microscopes are optical lenses for focusing whereas in case of the electron microscope the electron beam is there so electromagnets are used for uh, the focusing of uh, the electron beam in this, these are the differences in optical microscopy and SEM we here in optical case we use light rays in scanning electron microscope we use electron beam the resolution is we cannot uh, go beyond the uh, 0.3 micrometer or 0.25 micrometer due to the limit of wavelength whereas in case of the SEM we can go up to 0.4 nanometer here the magnification is around 500 to 1500 times whereas here we can go up to uh, 2 million times and uh, the, uh, here the lens material is optical glass whereas in case of SEM these are the electromagnets and in case of optical microscopy there is no need of vacuum but uh, for electron microscopy vacuum is needed for traveling of electron beam this is a diagram showing the scanning electron microscope and it have a electron beam which scans the surface of the specimen and uh, this space resolution can be high as 1 nanometer in this case and different type of signals when the electron beam is coming from the electron gun and it is focused and then it is coming to specimen so we get uh, different kind of electrons from this uh, after the interaction with this specimen there are some secondary electrons which can tell about the surface structure or image whereas there are some back scatter electrons which tells about the uh, structure and average elemental information and there, there are some uh, electrons which which are which emits the x-rays or uh, other electrons and they it can tell about tell us about the elemental composition of uh, the specimen so uh, this is shown in this image that when incoming electrons they strike the samples there are different kind of uh, electrons and different kind of radiations it comes out of the specimen or sample but we are if we are interested in only in the scanning electron uh, images then secondary electrons are important for SEM images so we are interested in secondary electrons the other uh, these other electrons or uh, radiations they give the another information this is a typical SEM in which we can see the images as black and white on the screen and these all we need high vacuum in this case and the electron beams go here and specimen is inside this chamber and then we can see on the screen the images 
here we can see that there is an electron source or electron gun where tungsten wire is heated by current and it emits some electron and they are focused using the their different kind of condenser lenses that they are they may be electromagnets and they uh, after uh, condensing these or focusing these electron beams on the sample uh, there are different kind of electrons coming uh, out of this secondary electrons backscatter electrons and some another signal like x-rays but uh, these secondary electrons will tell us about the images and they are analyzed and then we can see the image on the digital screen like this suppose this, uh, these are the images of some uh, nanoparticles and this, these are biological samples and some these are the uh, some particles nanoparticles and the advantages of this uh, SEM is that it gives detailed uh, topographical imaging and it gives another information and it works very fast and the we can generate the data in digital form and in SEM samples we do not need any special kind of sample preparation just we have to put the specimen or sample there and then we can see the uh, read the uh, images but the, there are some disadvantages that SEM are expensive and they are very large they need a big room for installation and uh, special training is required to operate this instrument and uh, they are limited to the solid samples we cannot do the SEM of liquids or another kind of sample and SEM uh, uh, they, they need uh, they need high vacuum because we cannot uh, do it in air or uh, normal environment now there is another electron microscope known as transmission electron microscope and in which the beam of electron is transmitted through the specimen to form an image in case of the SEM it was the scanning the sample and here it was transmitted through the sample so sample should be very thin and transmission electron microscope can magnify the objects up to 2 million times but the working principle is similar to SEM because here also we have the electron beams and in this case we can understand that the electron gun it will create some electron beam and it is again focused by um, magnetic lenses and but here the specimen is not uh, in the end but it is in between uh, so that the electron beam passes through the sample uh, uh, very thin sample and then we have to analyze it on the screen fluorescent screen or uh, some uh, digital screen you know, we uh, after and these electron beams should be passed through the sample so this is uh, it means transmission of electron through the sample again the procedure is similar we have the electron gun, gun which uh, creates the electron beam and magnetic lenses are used to focus again this whole setup should be in the vacuum and uh, the sample should be thin because then we get get the bright images here otherwise we get we if this is a thick sample then electron very less electron will pass through the sample and the preparation of sample is very important in case of the TEM and there are some TEM grids special kind of mesh like structure around uh, 3 millimeter diameter and the powder nano powder or some film is uh, put on this uh, grid and then it is placed on the sample stage and then electrons are passed through this and then we can visualize the images of uh, this uh, sample or specimen these are the TM images of different nanoparticles and some carbon nanotubes or fibers so uh, TM can be used in uh, biology microbiology or in nanotechnology forensic sciences and it, it can also study the bacteria viruses and also under nanoparticles or nanopowders um, used in nanotechnology 
and uh, we, it, it can also see some defects in different uh, kind of um, uh, specimens or devices. Limitations that TMs are very large and expensive and the sample preparation is very uh, laborious in this case and it needs high vacuum and it uh, requires special housing and maintenance and images are black and white in case of the TEM uh, images. Now we discuss the atomic force microscope and it was invented by Binning in 1986 and in this uh, the atomic forces are measured and then it scans the sample and in case of the atomic force microscope it is a tabletop device and it does not require any vacuum and there are some parts of this that a PZT crystal is there platform and sample is put on this and there is a cantilever uh, and it has a tip and when laser light falls on this tip and it is detected by some photodiode and then using measuring the force between uh, the tip and this piezoelectric uh, uh, material then uh, we can uh, get some images of using the atomic uh, forces here we, it is changed into the digital signal and finally we can get the uh, surface topography the working principle of AFM is that it have a uh, cantilever with a sharp tip and it uh, is on the sample and on a piezoelectric stage and usually this cantilever is made of silicon and the tip is of silicon nitride of few nanometer and when this uh, tip touches the sample and it moves on this sample then there is some force between this tip and the sample and it can be uh, uh, measured using the Hooke's law and uh, in most of the cases we do it by the contact mode means this tip is touching the sample and in some cases it is non-contact mode also but uh, most of the cases it is contact mode and using this measuring this force uh, we can see the topography of this sample by uh, on digital screen and it is useful for three dimension topography information of insulating and conducting structure because some uh, there are uh, some instruments are there which can measure only conducting samples but it can also measure the insulating samples and uh, it can uh, uh, the samples may be biological samples DNA or any kind of samples uh, can be scanned using this AFM and it, there is no need of any preparation of AFM samples it can operate in ambient uh, conditions and these are the typical AFM images where this uh, shows reddish part shows the low particle uh, lower uh, size and this uh, black shows the big bigger particles so for the griffin you can it can we can see the this hexagonal structure like this and these are the AFM images for the uh, I2O substrate or indium tin oxide Thanks for watching this video and if you are new to this channel then please subscribe this channel and if you have any queries or suggestion then please write in comment box. Uh, thanks again.